Well, good day to you. This is Jim Moore, and you are watching or listening to the program Justice for America. And it is Thursday, July, no, June 27th, 2024, and this is episode number 94. We've got a great program today. We have two or three really important things to talk about. We're going to talk about the debate that's happening between the two presidential candidates, Donald Trump and Joseph Biden. We're going to talk about a very, very important, I would say crucial, I don't want to overstate it, but super, super, it, like if you don't watch anything else, watch this kind of a, a video. I'll tell you all about it. And then about what has happened as far as conditioning a culture to believe certain things that are deceptive and so on. So again, I'm Jim Moore. This program is Justice for America. We deal with social issues from a biblical perspective. And the format is that I give you a number of links to watch because I cannot show them all to you. I can only show you a couple. And I trust that you will do your due diligence and take the responsibility to go and to watch those afterwards. So about 90% of this program is what happens after the program is ended. So as you're watching, come on and say hello and we'll try to acknowledge you. All right, let's go ahead and say and start. Uh, first of all, Please, again, I know you hear this every time you watch like a YouTube or a Rumble. Uh, first of all, comment while you can do that while you're on. And the more you comment, the more the algorithms wake up and send this, literally send this to other people. So do that. But if you go back and watch this on Rumble or YouTube or whatever, which I, I would appreciate it if you did, even if you're listening now, find one of those links and go to it so that you can do this, so that you can like it so that you can subscribe to the channel because we literally will get more people watching if you subscribe. If you don't, less people will see it. That's the way the algorithm works. You can share it, you know, cut and paste, the, use the link. You've all done that. Um, and if you haven't, reach out to me and I'll tell you how to do it. And probably the most important thing is hitting the notification bell. All right, so do those. So I want to start out today by speaking from my heart a little bit. All right. Are you are you willing to listen to Jim's heart for just a little bit? I have a, had a tremendous presence and weight upon my heart this morning on this program. Um, first of all, this is a, a, a historical day today. Now, in one way, every day is historical, right? Okay, things will happen today that never happened before. Blah blah blah. So, but it is especially significant today because of our first issue, and that's the debates. Now. I want to talk to Christians, okay? If you're not a Christian, <clears throat> this may not apply to you quite as much, but I think you'll find that it will. Uh, about 95% of the global population believe in God, whatever that means to them. I'm not going to preach on that, but um, so, so a lot of you, who are, most of you who are watching already believe. Now, I want to ask you the question. Again, I reached out to many, many people today um, for this purpose. I was brought up in the Christian faith. Now, I didn't become a believer until I was out of high school. And the church that I got saved in was very patriotic. So I have a great foundation of the collision and the intention of the Lord between or to have this this kind of tension between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom on earth and what our dual responsibilities now before you say well i see where this is going and i don't care because there are a lot of people hey steve there are a lot of people i think the phrase that would be uttered the most is or whether they say it or don't say it is i just don't care i've got problems of my own I'm just trying to pay the bills, my kids, my family, my dog, myself, my emotions, all of this stuff, which I believe in part is a ploy of the enemy to get us to focus away from these two issues, the kingdom of God and how we're supposed to advance that and righteousness in the kingdoms of this earth. Now, I want to ask you the question, is it even right to care about your government. Now feel free to comment, please comment. Steve won the other day, <laughs> okay? Comment on this. Is it even right to care? Is it right to be involved? Now listen, people have different levels of involvement. 
Okay, and again, lots of people say, I just don't even care, it's all going to burn. Listen, that's not, I'm going to tell you this, please listen to me, please hear me out. That's not, hi Christy, what the Bible says. Now, if you don't believe the Bible and you're just going by what you feel, that's your prerogative. I understand, I don't agree with that, I understand, I go by what the scripture says. Old and New Testament, some of the oldest passed away, I get that. But the overarching theme of God all the way from Genesis to Revelation, so it's in the New Testament, guys, is that we're supposed to care about our country. We're commanded to pray for all of those in leadership. I don't know where this thing got started, where I guess because politics really is dirty, there's a lot of corruption, we all get that, and we try to not be corrupted, right? <laughs> That's what, as believers, we don't want to touch the unclean thing and, and so we talk we tend to pull out and not be involved so it, it happened for many many years i heard it i didn't do it i might have done a little bit but like i said i had a good foundation for being patriotic and loving my country uh don't get involved don't talk about it and then we have the 501c3 thing that came along and said if you do talk about it we're going to take away your right to get a tax deduction for money so money entered in because the enemy knows that's all right, you get what I'm saying? There's this background that says, thou shalt not talk about it, thou shalt not deal with it, thou shalt not pray. Leave it all alone because it's dirty, dirty, filthy. I'm going to tell you, as boldly as I can tell you, because this matters to your life, whether you understand it or not, that's a lie from Satan. It is a lie that we're not supposed to have any involvement. Hey, Tom, I saw your name coming through there. Love you, buddy. This was never a message from heaven that we're supposed to wash our hands of this. It just isn't, okay? Now, you can obsess over it, that's not God. You can deny it, that's not God. It's always about the middle ground. So, let me give you an illustration and then we're gonna jump into these things. How many of you feel called to be a cop? <laughs> okay, 90% of you don't, call, be called, don't feel called to be a police officer. But does that mean they're not supposed to be? Does that mean you're not supposed to support them, the good ones? Does that mean that you're not supposed to pray? I know people in, in who are police officers. I'm not called to be a cop, but I pray for them. And just because I'm not called, you get what I'm saying? Just because I'm not called to be in the halls of Congress and to try to establish righteous legislation, which the Bible commands us to do, to rule and to govern with righteousness, doesn't mean it's invaluable, and it doesn't mean I don't have anything to do with it. I pray for the cops, for the police, for the politicians, for the practitioners. I pray for all of those who are in authority, because that's what the Bible says. I don't do it well, but I do it. Okay, same thing as a soldier. Most of you know somebody who's in the armed forces. Is that what you're called? You don't, you don't feel called to carry a gun and to shoot people who are bad actors, but you support them. Maybe you don't support the particular conflict, but you support them. All right, so I think it's important that we get our facts straight about these things. Now, one final thing. I said that twice now. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Debbie. That's good. Keep commenting, please. Open this thing up. Does God, now I know a lot of you again, that you tune in. I don't want to hear about this. I just want to hear about Joe Biden, blah, blah, blah. Just, this is important, okay? Just slow your roll, calm down, and just listen for just a second. I'm not trying to be obnoxious. Does God ever warn people? Now, many Christians will say, oh yeah, he used to do that in the Old Testament, but you can't show me proof. Oh, wait a minute. God gave multiple warnings in the New Testament about how we ought to live, how we ought to govern, how we ought to treat one another. Because governance really is about how we treat each other. Okay? Not going to go into that. So let's just give you a, a couple. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm. How many like the alarm clock? No, nobody. Says nobody. Actually, we do, right? Because that's why we use it. Not because it's pleasant when it goes off in our ear. It makes you like you're startled, you're uncomfortable, you want to throw it across the room. Somebody actually made an alarm clock where you, get, you can pick it up and throw it across the room. It's like made of rubber, and that's what shuts it off. <laughs> I need to get one of those. Okay? But I want you to notice that multiple times the word alarm. Now listen, this is Joel chapter 2 verse 1. Did Joel write this, or did God write this? 
Okay, well, there again, it's not either or, it's both and. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means he inspired it, and it was written by the pen, hey, Austin, the pen of man. So all scripture, not just the one you like, not just the one that's popular right now and gives you the goosebumps, you will fall into a ditch if you do not believe the whole counsel of God. Now, that's just the truth. So he says, blow a trumpet, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Then the next one is in Ezekiel. You've all read it before. He talks to a man who was just a man like me, okay, who was called to be a minister of, I will call it the gospel of the Old Testament. Okay, now you say, oh, that's no, that's a New Testament thing. No, 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 no. Listen, let me challenge you for just a second. And I promise you I'm going to jump into the links in one minute here, I think. Gospel means good news. Are you, do you mean to tell me that nothing God said in the Old Testament was good news? Do you mean to tell me that the warnings in the New Testament are not good news because they enlighten and awaken us? Have you ever thought of that? Good news isn't just, I love you, I love you, I love you, which I preach all the time. Those of you who know me know that is my life message. It's also, hey, you better not do this because if you do, it's going to hurt you. I think that's a good message from a good God. Now, the Old Testament is not bad news. There was some bad news in the Old Testament, but whatever God says in some way is good because God is good. All right, so let me just say this real quick. He said, Son of man, I've made you a watchman. When you hear my word, you need to warn them. I'm paraphrasing. When I say to the wicked, you will die, that's God himself. It's not the preacher, it's God himself giving a warning. God gives warnings. It says, if I give them a warning and I tell them this is going to happen and you do not speak to warn them, three times the word warn is used in this passage, he says, I'm going to hold you responsible. Okay, I'm not reading every bit of it. Let's jump to our links. You get what I'm saying? Don't you believe that a good God will not warn his people? Now, you may not be called to do that, but I am. By mandate of heaven, I know that's going to sound arrogant to some of you. I'm not trying to be. That's the way it is. So don't turn off the person and just assume they're a, uh, you know, a Debbie Downer or a Nancy Negative or whatever name you can come up with. You get it? Don't just shut them off and just assume. Now, sometimes the person that has that kind of call can get kind of aggressive. All right, cut them some slack. You're not called to do that. You're called to preach the love of God and healing and prophecy. Great. Awesome. I am too. There's not a lot of people that are called to do both. Okay, so just cut them some slack. All right. Today is a historic day. I've got two links on here. And again, if you don't watch the links, a lot of this is not going to make sense to you, but <clears throat> you really should. I know it'll talk, take you a whole hour to do it probably. So today is the debate. Nothing like this has ever happened. How many times have Linda and I sat and watched one of the presidential debates and said to ourselves, man, I wish they would have a cutoff for the mic. Not because of what they say. Okay, because sometimes these guys can get pretty rude to each other. And you know what? Honestly, if that's what's in their heart, they need to say it. I believe that they should have a cutoff when their time is up. For them to dominate and just keep going and going and going and disregard the parameters that they've already agreed to in the debate, that's not righteous. That's not right. Okay, so you go beyond your time. Yes. Uh, sir, you give you your 30 second warning and then you hit the second bell that says your your time is up and uh, and then give them a couple more seconds. Sir, your time is up and then you mute the mic. I believe what you're going to see possibly. I don't want to comment too much about the program tonight. I really hope you watch it. I think you should. If for no other reason say, well, I don't like that guy. I can't tolerate blah, blah, blah. OK, I get that. I get that. You are a witness to something that's never happened before. Are you listening? And this is why you should send this to somebody. You have the opportunity to be a witness to something dramatic. I guarantee you, heaven is going to be watching that thing. Uh, that's my opinion. You don't have to agree with this. Somebody say something. All right. I think what you might see, you want now CNN is moderating it. Jake Trapper, who has literally called Trump, uh, Hitler, okay, you, if anybody gets cut off before their time is up, it's probably going to be Donald Trump. All right. So that's coming tonight. The, the cards are stacked against Mr. Trump, 
okay? The Donalds, but, uh, and in favor of Brother Joe, he's, I shouldn't say brother, okay? But um, who knows? Who knows what will happen? Okay, it happens at 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, I hope I get this right, and 6 o'clock West Coast. So 6 o'clock West Coast, two hours later where I'm at, 8 o'clock Central, and then one hour later than that on the East Coast, 9 o'clock. Watch it. It's 90 minutes long. At least watch some of it. All right. Okay, now I'm going to say one more thing about this and then I'm going to move on to what I consider the most important part of this program today, so don't go away. Um, the 16 counselors. <sighs> what can I say about this? I do not hate Joe Biden. I know there are a lot of people that do. I don't believe in the spirit of hatred for any man. I believe everyone has an eternal soul and I'm supposed to care about them like God cares about them. Even if they're a murderer, even if they're an adulterer, doesn't matter who they are or what they're doing, I'm supposed to pray for their soul. And that is right, okay? It's easy to go into. If you become the spirit that is on somebody else, you lose, you've lost, okay? You have to maintain that right perspective. You can stand up and you can say, this is the devil and you can say, this is wrong. Okay, you get what I'm saying? So, President Biden, Joseph Biden right now is up in the hills, locked away with 16 counselors that are trying to drill into him what he's supposed to say. Now, whether that's good or bad or whatever, I don't know. But let me just say this. I forgot to say this about the first link. I feel like what's going to happen is that uh, Joseph Biden will be medicated, okay? Let me just say that. I believe he'll be medicated. He's, he is mentally impaired, okay? Okay, this is not a point of mocking, okay? And I try not to do that. I probably have once or twice. I apologize, Jesus. Okay, I'm, I'm not. He's somebody's grandpa. He may deserve all kinds of bad things happening, to him, whatever, okay? But the point is, from a, a purely physiological standpoint, not to mention the crazy things his policies have done, we'll get into that maybe, but simply not physically capable of being the leader of the free world. Not. And anybody with an honest bone in their body will have to confess that that's true. So I believe he'll be medicated tonight. Say, oh, that's crazy. That's conspiracy. No, no, no. All, most Americans are on some kind of medication. <laughs> it's just true. I don't forget the number is, but it's like way past 80% are on some kind of medication. So he's already on medication, I guarantee that. But, but the Democratic Party cannot afford to put this man up there and have him stumble and so on and so on. There's been a couple other times recently where he, I believe, was overly medicated and he kind of stood there like a zombie. All right, so I believe you're going to see that tonight, whether it's, it's caffeine or crank. I don't know what it is, but I think that'll happen. And again, I'm not just demeaning the man, I'm just saying... I think that's what you're going to see tonight. All right, let's jump off of that. Let's go to the next thing. As I said, this is, I believe, the most important part of this program. This is the part that if you miss, you, yeah. I believe the Lord really strongly placed upon my heart to search out and find a video that I frankly had lost from nine years ago. Okay, is everyone paying attention? Please Somebody say nine years ago, okay? Do you believe that God gives people advance warnings? Yes. Do you believe that he's too good not to do that? Of course he is, okay? So there's a man named Rick Joyner. Most of you know I've been a part of that ministry, good, bad, and ugly. I don't care, okay? I don't believe the legitimacy of a ministry is based on one person, not the Baptist, the Pentecostal, not, not a parachurch, whatever, okay? Okay, I talked about that yesterday on the program. Solomon had one of the greatest ministries, governmental and spiritual church and state that ever existed on the planet. And you cannot disannul the good that he did because he fell, and he fell hard. And we don't even know if he got restored. Okay, so get your mind straight about this. So, and I'm not saying that because I believe Rick or anybody in Morningstar has um, done anything bad. I don't think that's the case. But if they do, it's not going to change my mind about this. So there was a traumatic 
heavenly experience that Rick had nine years ago that I don't like to say predicted, but foretold what's happening right now. I'm just going to say this. You're going to be stunned. Those of you who will, who will be brave enough and disciplined enough, because this is not a candy-coated one. He says right in the beginning, he says, if you're one of those Christians that need nice things to say to you and you have no tolerance for difficult things, you might as well shut this off right now. And then he goes on to talk about he had a dream about heaven. He said that dream was a couple weeks ago. This is, this is the flip side. And that's what God does. He shows us the truth, not just the good things that we like. All right. So you're going to be stunned how many things that seemed impossible. I mean, we're living in a day right now where stuff's happening that we, we just like, I never thought this was going to happen. Are you listening to me? Somebody say amen. How many times have I sat on the couch and I'm sitting right next to you and Linda and I just go, we cannot believe this is happening. Never thought I'd see this. Never thought I'd live. Okay. The Lord, not Rick, Jesus laid it out to him nine years ago. And it hasn't even all happened yet. But I would say a good majority of it, the worst of it has not happened yet. But I'm sure when you watch this, you're going to go, that's happening. That's happening. That's happening. Massive turn to the left. That's happening. Open boards. Now, when he gives this, and I, I need to jump to the clip. When he gives this 30-minute you know, uh, recounting of the vision, the dream. It was a dream while he was asleep. Had, okay. He, he talks about the open borders and ISIS because that was the scourge of the day, okay. It doesn't matter who you call them. Hamas, ISIS, Venezuelan gangs. It doesn't matter. We're talking primarily not... So when he talks about gangs, he's not talking about like the, the Mau Mau's or the, I don't know, I'm not up on all the gang names. That was an old one. That was a really old one. That was crossing the switchblade old. He's not talking about, you know, current American, MS, whatever. He's talking about foreign gangs coming in across the open border. Nine years ago. And what he was seeing was something that was coming that was to the 10th power worse. And friends, we have not seen the end of it yet. Okay? I do believe we will see the end of it, but there's still more coming. Okay? You must watch this video. Say, Jim, I don't have to watch the video. Of course not. All right. So here's the clip I'm going to show. How truly evil is the devil? One of the things that he's going to say, I don't know if he gets around to it in the clip. But you've got to watch the whole thing. I can only show you. I'm showing you three minutes of it. It's kind of a long clip, actually. Usually we like to keep it to two minutes at the most. He talks about these gangs, and I believe they're festering right now, and I'm going to show you some links, festering, in, and it's going to blow up, okay? These gangs, and Rick was really good, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to say everything. Rick was really good about saying, if we pray, we can mitigate or stop these, and I believe that. I don't believe God gives you a warning just to emotionally prepare. God actually believes in the power of prayer. What a statement. He made it up because he believes in it and he will respond, okay? There's no other God who's ever been known that will respond when his people pray. So, maybe the reason this has taken so long is because people have been praying. I don't know. But how truly evil is the devil? He's talking about these gangs don't just kill people. So, October 7th, when they came across the border and did unthinkable, I can't even speak about the things. You... I'm trying not to get too worked up here. You haven't even seen them. There are quite a number of people that have seen the actual captive footage that came from the Hamas terrorists themselves wearing GoPros. You know, these are not deep fakes where they butchered in every inhuman way, sexually assaulted and then butchered, set on fire, anything you could imagine. Now, my question is this. Rick saw this in the dream nine years ago. ISIS was doing this on a much lower scale. It has gotten incredibly worse, and it's going to get even worse. Oh, Jim, I don't like to hear that. You're so negative. I'm just here to tell you the truth, okay? We can pray. We can mitigate it, okay? But it's not only coming. It's past the point of preventing it. This is something I want you to hear. Come on, comment, you guys. Steve is beating y'all. 
it's not something that we can we can prevent from happening because it's already happening and it has been going on ever since he gave that dream but we can bring it to an end and we can mitigate the severity of it okay through prayer and fasting and frankly holy living if we're not if we're not committed to holiness yeah anyway he's talking about these these gangs these terrorist gangs that are here in the country now by the thousands finally get to the place they're so demonized this is why I ask you how evil really is the devil that they don't want to kill their captives they just want to torture them do you realize okay I'm trying to get this I really am do you realize that Satan doesn't really want to kill people if he could keep a person alive and torment them for eternity that's what he do because that's what he gets his pleasure from and when a person becomes demon possessed which is what these people are that's what they want to do they don't want to kill they just want to hurt and gain power and pleasure from that so Tiffany had a yes thank you Tiffany read these comments talk to each other come on say hello to each other comment all right so God does give warnings here's the clip to do two things number one he gives us a warning to prove he's real oh my gosh God is real he told us about this nine years ago and to prepare actually three things to prove <laughs> to prepare and to pray those are the three reasons God gives advance notice and warning about things all right let's go to the clip this is a clip of Rick Joyner talking just a couple minutes about um, the dream that he had and then you'll need to go back and watch it later on so let's go to that clip now and what I saw in the dream I first saw the most horrific gang I have ever seen I mean this was a demonized gang I mean this was diabolical they were diabolical in their nature I can't imagine demons being more diabolical than these people were they were invading the southwest United States there were droves it was coming like a plague now I saw one of their attacks in great detail against a Texas ranch it was a ranch I knew to be in Texas some things in dreams you just know I knew the house the family this gang had herded up everybody there that was in the dozens of people whether they were workers family members everybody and I am not going to share the details of the dream after that I hope to never share them I don't want to share them with anyone I don't want to remember them they were so horrific cruelty on this level you know I mean I have done in-depth studies of the cruelty in the Middle Ages and things like that but this was a whole new level of demonic cruelty it wasn't just about killing people it was about bringing as much absolute pain terror everything else you can before death and everybody in the most cruel way was killed and uh, you know I, I just don't want to go into the details here that those are not necessary but I think it is necessary to understand we're dealing with something there's no mercy that is absolutely not a, an option with these people matter of fact they were ranked in these gangs and these gangs were like military gangs they had military equipment but their ranking was based I think gained by their cruelty and by their insatiable desire to be even more cruel in the way they killed people and uh, it was just the most diabolical thing I've ever ever seen all right so again those of you who are watching live I don't have the capacity yet to show those live so that's why you have a blank spot but if you want to watch that a clip or just I really recommend you watch the whole video you'll be able to do that later on <clears throat> all right so um, prophetic dream of foreign gangs taking over parts of the United States Isis 
and October 7th were only a foretaste of what is to come. I put the link on there. I'd watch it quickly if I were you. Number two. Now, the way I've listed these, and I'm going to go through these fast now, is I've got the heading in America. So I'm going to show you some of the links. This is actually happening on, I believe, a limited level right now. Okay? And you're seeing them if you're watching the news at all. It's happening every day. I can't even come up. What? Let me just say this. What you see on national media, whether it's Fox or you know, CNN, whatever the national, the big guys are, what you see on there is a smidgen compared to what's actually happening. You have to go to other places to really get the, you know, and I don't like that. I know you don't like that. I do that so you don't have to. Sorry you're late, Dana. God bless you. Hey, and again, thank you for saying that, Dana. Uh, if you're watching this and you're just coming in, go back and watch the beginning. A lot of it will not make sense unless you do that. Okay, because I'm down to the end here, hopefully. So I'm going to show you examples of Rick's dream happening currently in America. Okay, I've got like three of those. And then I'm going to show you like Germany, Russia. And again, I'm going to go through these really quick. And this is just to show you that. And you probably already know anyway, but it's happening. Number one, or number, it's actually number two. In America, illegals. And again, you're hearing this every day. Two illegal men, I believe they're from Venezuela. And it gets, forgive me if I get my facts mixed up a little bit. There's so many of them. They, R-A-P-E, I can't say it out loud that they'll take this off. And then went ahead and took the life of a, a little 12-year-old girl. And when you hear the full story of it, which nobody wants to hear, right? I get it. They brutalized her, bashed in her head with a rock, Dumped her in a creek. These are animals. People don't do this unless they're demon possessed. Do you understand that? And that's not just some rhetoric. That's just uh, me trying to find the worst possible way to describe. No, 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 no. If you haven't believed in demon possession until now, you better start believing because that's exactly what's happening. You open yourself up to a spirit of murder and a spirit of of uh, uh, immorality and a spirit of assault and all. You name it. Okay, that thing can come in. All right, get what I'm saying. Number two, this is in America. Jesse Waters talks about, he says this phrase, and I agree, he says, there's so many migrant attacks that are exploding like IEDs right now. IEDs, you know, the bombs. So they're exploding everywhere. It feels like a terror attack to me, and he's right. You know, in a battle, when you read the Bible or your history, yeah, thank you, Christy, when you read about the battles of old, what would happen? They almost always would wait to attack a city when? Right at the beginning of daylight while everyone was still asleep. At the deepest part of sleep, they would attack. Satan attacks when we're asleep. Did not Jesus say that the entire church, all 10 virgins would be asleep prior to his coming and need to be awakened? Yeah, but, oh, but God doesn't do that. All he, he just talks about love and sings songs over us in the night and prophesies our destiny. Yes, yes, yes. He does all of that. I'm so happy he does that. I do that if he lets me, but that's not all he does. Jesus said, a midnight cry. Okay, midnight, hypothetically, proverbially, prophetically, always spoke of the darkest time of the night. Okay. A cry was made, a shout was made, a trumpet blast, a warning, okay? He didn't just come in throwing flowers and go, hey, everybody, wake up. <laughs> a cry, that word cry means a shout, a yell, okay? The midnight, a cry was made. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. It's time to wake up. Awake, awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. All right, so these things have been happening under our nose. We don't know what we have allowed. Our country, you know, collectively, has not really understood. You'll understand it when you watch that video from Rick. We have not really understood. I watched the video. I remember watching it nine years ago, and it just kind of like, oh, that's terrible. Now, you're going to be amazed, I just tell you. All right. Go on, Jim. Okay, I'm going to have uh, go to another clip. How many know who Dr. Phil is? Raise your hand if you know who Dr. Phil is. I'm going to tell you what I appreciate about Dr. Phil real quickly. 
He went for years and years, never touching any kind of political issue. He's, he was a psychologist by, by uh, education. He was a, um, a trial. Oh, Lynn and I watched uh, the, the program. What, what do they call it? A trial consultant. That's what it was. He is, at, you know, the program Bull. Um, maybe you've never watched it. Bull, it's all about this one actor being a trial consultant. Well, that was made from the life of Dr. Phil. He's actually the producer of the program. Hey, Matt, how you doing, buddy? Okay, so that's what he did all his life. He didn't touch political things at all. Finally, now what this did is that gained him a reputation for being a very even-keeled, very balanced, very fact-oriented public speaker. I, you know, you ought to be glad for these men. I'm going to tell you right now, unapologetically, I would stake my life on this. God has raised up men like Dr. Phil and Tucker and different ones. I know they're not always right. I know they can be bombastic, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care. All I know is that they have spoken the truth about many things, if not most things. And Dr. Phil is now into the fray. If you don't believe any of the rest of them, maybe you'll believe Dr. Phil. I'm not trying to be mean. So let's show a clip of him. <clears throat> and this is what he and this person that he's um, uh, interviewing are talking about, this very thing about Rick Stream. And we're going to isolate it to the Venezuelans because that seems to be a predominant, but it's people from all kinds of countries, a hundred and some countries that have terror cells here in the United But what he's going to say specifically, and you're going to see this, is this man who is high official, I can't even remember what his official capacity is, but he is definitely in the know. Okay, not a crazy guy. He's just a sane man who is saying, we don't understand what's happening. And he talks about Venezuelan gangs that have come in illegally, that are now, listen to me, listen, this is not coming it's right now today, if you could go, he said there are portions of cities, I believe he mentions Dallas, uh, New York, he mentions some big cities, and it's almost always in a big city, where, remember Chaz? Somebody remember Chaz, the no cop, no, uh, you know, righteousness zone in Seattle, where, where basically the barbarians ruled, and drugs and sex and nudity on the street and no police and killing each other. I mean, it was like hell on, on earth, okay, instead of heaven on earth. Well, this is happening again. And he's talking about these Venezuelan gangs that are ruling. Let's just talk about the one in Dallas. I think it's Dallas. He said the cops won't even go in there. Now, let me just say this and then I'll move on. Shame on the cops. I don't believe in shame. I'm sorry. Let's think of another word. Bad cop. Okay, not, and not just the cops, because cops typically do what, they're employees of the city, right? Okay, that's the way it works. They're employees of the state, employees of the city. They don't get to do whatever they want to do, okay? So really, it's about the city council and the mayor and the governor of the state and so on. I'm telling you right now, Jim Moore's going to get a little bit upset right now when I tell you this. What in the world do we have a police force for if they cannot go in and stop that? Dear God in heaven! They have been given the authority, or at least they're supposed to have, okay, to go in and stop that. Every one of those council members, or at least the ones that vote against their exercising their authority, should be voted out or even arrested and taken out. You can't, I say, well, Jim, that's, that's inhumane. No, what they're doing is inhumane, okay? Somebody comes into your house and takes over and you can't do anything. You can't enforce the rules of your own house and your family's getting uh, taken advantage of an abuse, I will force them out with whatever means necessary because that's the authority God's given me. And we give authority to police officers to do that. And God help the city council that takes that away from them. Okay, I'm done. Let's watch this clip. <laughs> I'm telling you, if we don't get serious about this stuff and start doing the hard thing, how far will it have to grow? How many will have to die? How much... How much? How much? Okay, now I'm sweating. Let's go to clip number two. This is um, Dr. Phil speaking to, I forget to put it out his name, about these gangs in America taking over portions of the city right now. Let's go clip number two. So if your estimate is we've got 15 to 18 million people and 
DHS, I want to be clear about this, DHS has acknowledged that we've got millions of Venezuelans that have come here and that Venezuela has emptied their prisons of their murderers, their rapists, their drug addicts. They've emptied their rehab centers and said, we're turning you loose as long as you leave this country and go to the United States. And DHS knows that, and they know they've come here, and they know they've entered the United States. We've processed them in. They come, and they've got a passport or whatever from Venezuela. We know that they've come from the prisons and the rehab centers. We've processed them into America, and we have no idea where they are. Well, some we do, and I'll, I'll give you some locations. Uh, by the way, and in addition to that, before I forget, some are coming with an agenda, are being sent uh, they are Chavistas sympathizers. These are Hugo Chavez people. Uh, they're socialist communists, and uh, and and they're they're bringing that agenda purposefully in South uh, Florida, in Dallas, Texas, South Dallas, Texas. There's an uh, area called Via Dallas, right now, that is controlled by illegal alien Venezuelans. You can't go in there. Dallas PD doesn't even go in there. As a matter of fact, they're looking for private security people to try to go in there and contain the trafficking, the drugs, the prostitution, uh, everything that's going on in there. And just like this community in Dallas, there's in one Dallas. in Florida, and there's uh, they're all around. And it's the the gang associated with Tren de Aragua, the the gang, the Venezuelan gang that has attached itself to these communities and control these areas here in our country. Okay. Again, if you're watching live, hi, Carrie. If you're watching live, I, there's nothing wrong with uh, this. I can't, I don't have the technological capacity to actually show the clip, but it will be on when we edit YouTube and so on. Or you can just watch. And again, this is one of my must watches. You can just watch this and it's a little bit long, but it's worth your time. All right. Uh, so let's switch from what's happening in America to what's happening in a couple other places on the planet, because this is a global problem. Islam, are you listening to me? Probably get booted for this. Islam. Now, again, here's the caveat. I mean it sincerely. We always have to give it because some will go, yeah, but, 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 but. So, okay. Okay, I get it. Not everybody who's a Muslim is like this. I get it. There are thousands, maybe tens of thousands who do not believe in Infatata, or at least in the natural, and maybe a spiritual war. Don't believe in jihad, which is, means a holy war. Okay, I all do credit to them. Okay, I don't believe your religion, but as long as you don't try to kill everyone, I'm okay with you. Okay, I'll try to win you over to Jesus' side. But in the core doctrine of the Muslim faith, as many statements saying it's okay to kill the infidel, <clears throat> you just have to acknowledge that if a person takes the teachings of the Quran, literal, not spiritual, not, not figuratively, if a person takes them literal, and millions, not a few thousand, millions, especially in other countries, do take it literal, and make the statement, our job is to kill every Jew on the planet. Okay, so this first one, Islamic, uh, there's been a shift that's happened. This happened in Russia. Now, I, I hesitate to call them terrorists because if you have a mindset that you're supposed to have a holy war, a jihad, understand that's what the word means. If you're of the mindset that you're supposed to kill Jews everywhere around the globe, which I'm going to say millions do, then I don't think terrorist is the right word. Because terrorist, in our minds, speaks of this little minority of people who are radicalized. I'm telling you, you are seeing the rise of what has been in the core of radicalization, let's call it that. So what you've got, they may be classical terrorists, or they may just be, we are seeing citizens who have not typically been involved in terrorist acts rising up and starting to stab, kill, assault, and you know what I mean by assault, okay? The innocents, women, mostly women and children, okay? 
Now they're attacking churches and synagogues. This first video is very short. They're attacking, in Russia, churches and synagogues. That's a shift. Okay? In other words, hold, are you listening? I hope I'm not losing you. I, I don't want to bore you, but this is relevant. Okay? A jihad, listen now, is a holy war. It's, it, it has its core, in my understanding, and I could be wrong, other religions, okay? Christians are the enemy. Jews are the enemy. It, Buddhism is the enemy. So it is significant that these attacks now are touching religious organizations. So watch that one. In France, let's skip to what's going on in France. These guys are out there with their bullhorns, and again, this is not the, the minimal few. They're gathering huge crowds, huge crowds over the loud horn. This is in France. They're, they're, they're saying, we have not risen up yet, but we're preparing to do that. You know, we have to uh, take, take, we can't take for granted what's being said. We have to listen to what's being, we cannot be so naive as to say it's just a bunch of rhetoric. Okay, and then in London, I'm trying to do these quick. In London, so it, this is this is exploding like a nuclear bomb all over Europe. I'm not exaggerating. I only pulled out a few. Just about every country that has not abolished and put the crackdown on this stuff, that's just letting it go. Okay, is being terrorized because when you give someone permission to act out in evil, and their, their bent is to do that, and they feel legitimate to do that for whatever reason, it will increase. I, it's beyond me how people cannot understand that. All right, so London uh, shows a man tearing down a cross on a church, okay? I'll just skip over that one. Uh, in Germany, this is a short clip of some kids. Now, these are kids. <clears throat> these are like, they look to me, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. I'm not a good judge of age, but they're little kids, and they're being interviewed. And they're saying, this is what they say. So Afghan, let me read this to you, hear, hear me. Afghan and Syrian kids in Germany, in this little interview, it's very short, talk about how they will hit German girls, even, and I quote, shoot the girl if she wears a skirt to a public place. And they're saying it with force. Now, they're trained to say that. The kids don't come by this naturally. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is a culture of death. They, well, we just need to love them into Jesus. Come on. Come on. Yes, we do. We need to preach the gospel. We don't want to become the very thing that we're, we're standing against. Okay? We do want to win people to Christ. Absolutely. But you don't do that while they're slaughtering your children. Okay? while they're abusing women on the street. Okay, all right, you get, you get the point. Um, globally, now this one you really should watch. This is, so we've done in America, in Russia, in France, in Germany. This is in general, and what I mean in parentheses is in globally. Here's a Islamic messenger, a preacher, whatever. He is on television, a Palestinian television, declaring, listen to this, we don't want a sovereign state. The whole thing about, well, all they really want, and this is where all of our young people are deceived, all they really want is a place to call home. That is not true. 100% that's not true. This man finally is coming out and saying it. Why? Because everybody knows it now. It's always been, give us our state, give us our state. Well, now, with everyone chanting from the river, the Jordan River, to the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, which encompasses all of Israel, which is predominantly you know, occupied, or not occupied, but populated with Jews, okay? Actually, the Palestinians are the occupiers. Won't get into that. But that whole phrase means elimination. It means death. It means genocide. And they actually get on TV now and say that, okay? He says, we do not want a sovereign state. We want to kill all the Jews for the sake of Allah, which is the God of Islam. He added that it, now listen to this, he added that the Islamic scriptures, the Quran, gives Muslims the right, and I put that in bold words, the right to murder Jews because, quote, Jews endanger all humanity. The Bible told us that this would happen. You see, you've got to pay attention to the Bible. You really do. And not, I don't, I'm not just talking about giving it a cursory reading once in a while. I'm talking about you need to get your 
your butt off your chair. <laughs> Sorry. You need to get your behind off your chair, get your nose in the Bible once a day, you know, and find out what it says. God told us this would happen. He said, in the end, all the nations would gather against Jerusalem. It is, I always wondered how that would happen. I'm like, that can't happen. Why, how would every nation turn against Israel? How could that happen? Are we not watching it, friend? Are we not watching it right now? All right, I'm down to the last ones here. I don't have time to go through all of these, but um, so I was talking now about the rising scourge of Islam. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the rising scourge of perversion that's happening in the world. Again, these are massive themes in the world right now that we cannot afford not to pay attention to. Uh, if I, I'm literally going to quit in one minute here. I say one minute, but it might be a minute and five seconds. All right. Everybody still there? Everybody all at one time, come on and say something. <laughs> okay. So the rise of sexual perversion in this country and the world is a part of the plan. Now, I'm not being conspiratorial. It is literally the part, again, the Bible told us this would happen. Just because you haven't read it doesn't mean it's not true. It says all the world will become drunk with the wine of fornication. All the world, that's everybody, the globe, doesn't mean every human being, but the masses will become intoxicated with the wine of sexual perversion. Immorality, okay? It, it says in the King James, fornication, it literally means all sexual immorality. The whole world, it's happening. And you just say, oh, I, like, I don't like it, so I'm too tender. I can't, no, 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 don't be irresponsible. I'm not saying go out and view everything. Uh, you don't, please don't defile yourself, but don't pretend it's not happening either. So. I get quite a number, five or six of these. Um, the first one is a, a picture, and I write down when it's graphic, okay? So the first one is a picture of uh, a family-friendly, listen to me now, all ages, P-R-I-D-E, parade, okay? You know what I'm saying. And it's just one picture of one table that shows all the little toys you can buy. I'm sorry, I know it's horrible. I don't put on everything but I try to listen to the Lord. You don't have to look at it. Number two, this one is also graphic. This is, and this one has a lot of language because the guy who's confronting this man, so let me back up. There's a man who works for a child advocacy agency. What they do, and I'm not giving his name, what they do is they uh, pretend, this has been going on for a while in law enforcement and other agencies, so this is not some quacked out thing. This has been happening. It's a good thing that's happening. Okay, they go on these chat sites and they pretend to be minors and they try to, uh, they, they, you know, the ones who, they don't, they're not trying to entrap people. Some people would say that, but I say more power to you. Okay, if someone is prone to do this, the, they pretend to be the kid. Hi, Debbie Jean, God bless you. They pretending to be the child do not try to get them to do this. That is entrapment. But they pretending to be a child wait for that other person to begin to try to draw that child in. And then when it goes to set them up where they meet, you know, in order to have intimacy, they're there as the child, as it were, to confront that person. So what you're going to see is the interview. The guy that's doing the confronting does a lot of bad language. I apologize for that, but I think this is important. Why? Because this idea that everybody who is... Uh, involved in LGBTQ or gay. I'm not saying they're all um, like pedos. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they're all doing criminal acts. I'm not saying that. There's always those who do and always those who don't. Yes, there we go. There's my caveat for the naysayers, okay? But more and more, we're finding people in positions of power are breaking the law. Why? Because they cannot control their lust. They cannot control the demon spirits that control them. Are you listening? Somebody say amen. I know you don't like to hear it, but it's still the truth, all right? So, Robert, God bless you. All right. So he confronts. Now listen to who he's confronting. This is the leader, the top guy of the LGBTQ Democrats in Maryland. Let me say it again. The top leader 
LGBTQ community in Maryland was going to meet a young 14-year-old boy. And he's confronted, and of course he denies it. They always do. You can tell by his father, oh, I wasn't going to do anything, blah, blah, blah. Hope he goes to jail. Okay. All right. So then there's a few more. And let me just ask you one more thing about that. For those of you who are like, I don't care. That's just gross. I don't want to listen to it. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Does Jesus care about that? Wake up. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be mean. Does Jesus care about that? Then why don't you? How can you and I, who claim to have the Spirit of the Son of God inside of us, who cares tremendously about these situations, I don't care about them. Well, I just can't handle it. Well, maybe you can't handle it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to belittle you. I'm saying don't give yourself an out just because you don't like it. I don't like it either. Okay? But if it were your kid, would it matter then? And so I said this phrase the other day. I'm going to say it again. I hope every one of you write it down in the comment section right now. I'm going to say it again because I believe this is truth. If it matters to God, it matters to me. That doesn't mean I'm going to go out and start a new ministry on that. But if it matters to God, it matters to me. And you know what? If you're going to be an intercessor, you have to be an informed intercessor. All right. So I'm going to say. So um, number three is a woman talking about parents who have given into the gender dysphoria and what that's going to be. I've never heard anything like this. This is another must see. I beg you to watch it. This woman is so articulate and I never thought about this before. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. I know you're listening and that's it. So I'm done. All right. I don't want to talk about me so much, but I do want to say this as you're giving your final comments. You need to share this with some. Don't be afraid. Don't, please, please. The time for being afraid of what people think of you is over. All right? You're going to stand before God and be accountable. Be led by the Spirit. Do it. But to ask Him. Ask Him what you ought to do. All right? I don't want to do this program. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I don't. Okay? I get no pleasure. But I believe it's my responsibility to make you aware just like the Lord said that we read earlier, go back and listen to the first part if you're just tuning in in Ezekiel 33. God himself, listen to me, confronted a man who was called to be a mouthpiece and said, if you don't tell them this, I will hold you accountable for what happens to them. Now, we're not all Ezekiels, but we all can pray. And I think there's a good deal of you who could copy this. See, one of these days, I'm, I'm fully convinced that it is within the realm of possibility that I'll either get shut down or who knows. But I've counted the cost. I'm not trying to virtue signal. I'm just saying. I hope you do the same. All right, guys. Love you. We'll edit all this and then we'll uh, put it out on Rumble and YouTube and so on. And uh, please, when you're done, right now, if you have time, if I haven't overwhelmed you and overpreached, start watching these videos. At least, if you cannot watch any of the other ones, watch the Rick Joyner one and focus in on it and count how many things he's talking about that are happening right now. There are a few to come. But please watch that video. All right. Love you guys. God bless you. And love Jesus, love one another, and give yourself permission to have a great day. Bye-bye.